I've come to Glasgow's East End, where in 2008, one of the locals thought they'd seen a rat. But upon closer investigation, those reports led to the discovery of Glasgow's first grassland water vole population. Water vole ambassador Robin Stewart has been trying to get to the bottom of what's been going on. So Robin, I guess the million dollar question is, if there is no water around you, how did they get here in the first place? Um, I wish I could answer that properly. <laughs> One theory that's been put forward is that you've got the M8 corridor that runs along here. At one point, that was the Monkland Canal, and it's perhaps that the, the relic populations along the canal were pushed out when the works were getting done and they've moved into the grassland just adjacent to it. It must have been a huge surprise to you to find them here. Absolutely mind-boggling. It goes against everything that you think you know about water voles. They're supposed to be like very specialised and living in wetland habitats, but you can see the grassland is completely different. And these water voles aren't just surviving here, they're thriving. In their traditional wetland habitats, you may find between 8 and 15 individuals on a one-kilometer stretch of riverbank. Here, this one small patch of grassland is thought to be home to more than 100 voles, with their underground burrows exceeding 100 meters in length. What is it about this habitat that makes them do so well over here? There's two main factors. So the soil, first and foremost, must be diggable, so not too wet, not too clay-based, and um, for them to build their burrow system in the first place. They will also have really high-quality grasses to feed on, which are all quite fast-growing, but they provide them with all the nutrition um, that they need. And since smelling that first rat, the locals have taken the voles to heart, and volunteers work tirelessly to create and maintain these grassland habitats, benefiting both the voles and biodiversity. And all the signs point to a great success story. So these are exactly the same signs that you'd expect to see around a wetland water bowl habitat, but right here in a grassland. Yeah, absolutely. So they still have the burrows, um, the feeding remains, the trees droppings. Um, the only real difference in field signs is probably you see a lot more of the vole hills. That's what I find really exciting about this, though, because these signs could be easily overlooked and there could be grass and water bowl populations all around the country, but we've just not seen them yet, not known where to look or what to look for. Absolutely, and I think it's, it's really great that we're rethinking um, water voles and the kind of habitat that we find them in. And I guess, I mean, you can see this, this tiny patch of land is hemmed in by development all around. I mean, is that a big issue as well? Development is a big issue. The main thing is sort of balancing the needs for regeneration along with the needs for, for wildlife. A prime example of this balance in action can be seen in Cranhill, where water voles are thriving in a park that is actively undergoing regeneration. And with the highest density of voles in the city, it's the perfect place to see them. I can absolutely see why people think these are rats, but actually, when you take a closer look, they are really different. What would you say the real distinct differences are? So they're very similar in shape and size and weight, but I mean, the muzzle of a water vole is sort of far flatter. Rats have very pointed noses. The same with rats' ears are big and round, whereas a water vole tend to lie flat against their heads. So what's going to happen to this population here with all the regeneration work? So the plan is to actually keep the population here, but just move them around the park slightly. Obviously, we're really proud to have water voles in amongst our cities and our parks. Um, and the main aim is to sort of have regeneration and water voles living alongside each other. So although water vole populations are declining in their traditional habitats, the discovery of these grassland populations is great news for the species. And better still, Glasgow's population is now recognised as nationally significant, and that could be crucial for the future of water voles across the UK.